Greetings and welcome to 13 Nights of Halloween! <laughs> Well, this probably isn't the most interesting thing in the world, but I thought by talking about my favorite Halloween memories, maybe this would be an opportunity for you to post some of your favorite Halloween memories and we could discuss it. Because let's face it, Halloween is a very memorable holiday, even if it's not your favorite holiday as it is mine. Now, whereas most people's favorite Halloween memories are probably when they were a kid, my favorite Halloween memories begin once I started doing... Haunted houses, both acting in them and going to them, and just generally enjoying Halloween as more of an excuse to just party or to trick-or-treat as it was when I was a kid. Well, Halloween was also fun as a kid because you got to take some time out of school. Even though you didn't get a day off from it, you usually have like kind of a Halloween party going on in your own classroom. So, even if you didn't like Halloween, you at least dug not having to do math and science and... Just getting to do some costume competitions or some pin the nose on the witch or bobbing for apples. Then again, depending on what school you're in, some celebrated Rules regarding costumes are a lot more strict. Back when I was in grammar school and even on through into high school, there was no rule about wearing masks in school. But after things like Columbine, after things like Virginia Tech, after things like, of course, 9-11, no one can really be too careful, so you're not allowed to wear a full mask in most schools anymore, which does kind of make Halloween... Well, then again, most people prefer to wear makeup as opposed to a hot mask that smells, that sweats, that you can't really see out of. Though I was always one to like masks a lot more than makeup. I just have very, very sensitive skin... And as you can tell from the videos, I am perfectly okay wearing a mask, even though they're quite uncomfortable after a while. My favorite memories of Halloween probably go back to the late 1980s when I was... I forget at what point what I was going to be, but I remember that was like the biggest deal to me, and I was thinking about it about a year in advance. And for whatever reason, my dad decided to make some interesting Halloween decorations. And he bought this tape of scary music to play so that trick-or-treaters would hear that from miles away and be drawn to the house. It was extremely scary, so I didn't want to hear it, and yet I was fascinated by it. I always wanted to turn it on. But um, I remember the excitement of making our own Halloween decorations, making this coffin and putting a mummy in there that we made by hand. And my dad even hooked up some electronics so that you could step on the on a floorboard that he manually created and put on our walkway. And there was a wire underneath the floorboard that went all the way into the mummy who had Christmas, Christmas lights for eyes. Two red Christmas lights. And they lit up so whenever you stepped on it, his eyes lit up. And since then, I think I always wanted something bigger and better for the Halloween decorations, but I was often pushing the limits of what could actually be done. As a kid, you're not really thinking too much about what can logically be accomplished, and you start saying you want something to, like, um, change into a werewolf. Well, how exactly do you do that? Of course, that got buried after years and years of doing it, and... Um, Halloween's still my favorite holiday, but I always remember back to that moment. The excitement of creating something and the excitement of seeing something come to life, so to speak. I also remember one of my very early costumes that I've spoken about in another blog post, which is this um, Martian costume, which I wore to a karate Halloween party, and it became so famous... Because I, I, it was homemade. <clears throat> my dad rigged this thing up on my head so that I had this single eyeball that could light up if I flicked the switch. I had green makeup. I, I looked very, very weird 
And I don't know if people quite understood. Maybe that's what people remembered about it so much is they, they had to look at me and go, wait, what are you? But ever since that day, everybody would start calling me by the character's name. I had a, a character's name, and I was supposed to be like the King of Mars. And to this day, some people in karate will still reference that. So I guess that's got to be one of my favorite memories. Also, I won the costume contest for funniest costume. But really, my favorite memories with Halloween, they go... So pretty recent times when I started doing these haunted houses and acting in them. I did that in high school for a time too, but those aren't great memories because they were really slapped together at the last minute and I was always really ticked off because it didn't seem like anybody else but me was doing the work. The final product was always rushed because people weren't doing enough stuff beforehand. It was exciting at the time, but now I look back on it and remember just how frustrating and how angry I was about it all the time. But with acting in these haunted houses, there have been some really, really good ones. My friend gets better and better with building his haunted house, and it's now like an attraction. I think my favorite memory of that one is the year I was in the torture chamber. And there was supposed to be this woman that was like my victim, and I had a sword, of course, and I had a, a knight costume. And there was another guy that was uh, on a table with a fake saw about to cut him in half. It was actually a pretty good effect where if he, if, if he was in the table, there was this prop that made it look like he was being sawed in half. It's, it's kind of tough to explain without showing you, but let's just say it was a do-it-yourself prop that looked really good. But anyway, this other girl was pretending to be my victim. All of a sudden, this kid walks in. And mind you, this particular room had so much fog in it from the fog machine that you could barely see anything. If anybody did see me, they assumed that I was a statue. This kid didn't see me at all. And this girl is, like, crying out, like, bloody murder and saying, Help me! Help me! And so anyway, this kid hears it and... And wa actually walks over to the girl, completely oblivious to me, and says, All right, I'll help you. I'll help you. What are you going to do? Meanwhile, I'm sneaking up behind this kid. Again, has no idea. And the girl, who, of course, is an actress in this thing and on my side, looks to me and goes, Look out! And points to me. This kid turns around, comes right, str right smack into a really scary-looking knight, and I draw the I draw the sword. The sword is stainless steel, so it's it's metal, but it's not sharp. This kid like fell over. He was so scared. S fell over, screaming, so shocked. He never saw me coming. It was like the funniest thing I've ever seen. I, to this day, I don't think I've ever scared anyone that much in any of these uh, haunted houses that I've done. And every year I keep trying to do it. But we'll see what happens this year. That may or may not have been the same year that I had the giant wings. I can't remember now because it was actually a couple of years ago in uh, the cost. Two years in a row I was, I was kind of like a scary knight, so the years kind of blend together. <clears throat> but I had these wings that I think you've seen if you watch my review of Sucker Punch, where I actually have a dragon character with wings. It's the same ones, and I wore Skullhead's mask. From those of you that really, really know my show, the Skullhead's mask can be pretty scary. And I dressed like that for the Haunted House that year. And I also wore it to the Halloween party that the same guy who runs the Haunted House, he has a Halloween party at his restaurant every year. And I actually dressed up in my costume, and I walked across the street, and as soon as somebody saw me, they like turned around the corner, and that was just when I decided to, um, to unleash the wings, because the wings would actually pop up, kind of like Batman, and it scared the living crap out of this woman who had obviously been drinking quite a lot from the party, but it was really cool. And even cooler, I had to get some cash, actually, because I realized I didn't have any cash on me, so I went next door to a bank, 
And so <laughs> there's probably like a security fo- there's probably security footage of me walking into a a bank with the costume. It's like who looks at the security footage and sees a giant m- medieval bat slash knight thing walk inside and use the ATM and then leave. <laughs> I almost wish I could have heard about that one, but I'm kind of glad I didn't because obviously something like that would warrant suspicion. But then again, it was the night of the Halloween party, so they all probably knew about it. But that was pretty funny. Oh, and actually, I just forgot one of my favorite memories, which actually happened last year. I looked it over because last year was a tough year for a lot of people. It was a tough year for anybody who does anything on Halloween because here in... New Jersey, or in what I call the tri-state area, there is really, really bad weather, and Halloween was spoiled as a result of this. We're talking snow, we're talking ice, we're talking people losing power. Halloween basically didn't happen last year, but for the few that it did happen for, we did do the Haunted House for one final night, and the last group was so scared that as soon as like they saw the first person jump out, they started running through the whole thing, like trying to run towards the entrance. Sorry, trying to run towards the exit. Wow, I can talk tonight. When they started running, and then when they got to the point of the chainsaws, they started running really, really, really really fast, and everybody just kind of took cues from each other, and we all decided to leave our spots and run and chase after them. We probably chased them down for a good 150 feet after they got out of the haunt because they ran scared, like screaming and crying through this haunted house that was outdoors and got to the exit and kept running and running. And I swear we must have chased them for like a few blocks. We were joking about it afterwards saying, yeah, they're probably still running now. That is a good one, and when you can get a good scare like that, that makes Halloween very memorable, because I always felt as a kid, maybe it's kind of annoyed, I always loved getting the candy, but I always felt that there should be more to Halloween than just getting candy. The Halloween is about being scared or scaring other people. The emotion of fear has something really, really addictive to all of us. No matter what you say, we all like to be scared somewhat. Maybe because it, it for, it's life affirmative. Maybe because, I don't know, there's something sexual about it, some people will say, or romantic. There's a reason why people go out to horror movies for date nights. So maybe that's the appeal. But whatever it is, Halloween, I think, can be a very, very powerful holiday if you let it. But you gotta be willing to find your inner child, and I hope that happens to you this Halloween. If it doesn't, well then you suck.